Hi, good afternoon. Welcome here. We are talking sports with Val for a lovely April day. It's a little better than yesterday, I guess, Val. So we've uh, actually had a few spring sports this week. So yeah. we're going to have uh, a few things to talk about here today on our episode of Talking Sports with Val. And first off, how are you doing? Yeah, doing well. Um, we've had kind of, it's been kind of a weird week, especially well, the softball game was really weird on Wednesday at Rochester. And we'll get into that later. Uh, wanted to congratulate uh, Garrett Weiniger, though, the Rochester grad, graduated in 2010, and he won a state championship coaching Fishers to the Class 4A boys basketball state title uh, a couple weeks ago. Yeah. And there was, there was a documentary that was made. I mean, the, the cameras went, they were right in the middle of those huddles in the fourth quarter of the state championship game saying, you know, like, if you want to win the blue ring or the red ring, you know, you got you to gotta get rebounds. And they were, in the, they were in the locker room and everything. It was great. Yeah, to see uh, to see him coach that team. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty awesome. You know, four A obviously that's that's almost like winning a college championship. I mean, that's the that's the big dogs in the state for sure. Right, and they beat Ben Davis, the defending state champ in the state championship game. I mean, they 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 lost only one game the whole year. And Garrett's, I mean, what what a career he's already had. He's played for a state. Uh, for a team that made it to the state championship game, he has been an assistant coach in a state championship game, and now he's been a head coach in a state championship game. And he's, I want to guess, 32 years old. Yeah, not a not a bad start. Not yeah. There's a there's a lot of old coaches that would you know really enjoy that being their career. So, right, right. Know. And I mean, they lost Jalen Harrelson to Laporte Lollymere before the season started. He is a like a five star recruit. Mm-hmm. And he won the state championship without him. I mean, that would have been devastating for a lot of schools. And they just kept on keeping on. Yep. So congratulations to Garrett. Also, the uh, Indian All-Star team was revealed uh, on Thursday. And uh, not a big surprise in that players like Flory Badunga and Jack Benter and uh, Jack Miller was the guy who really just came on, the kid from Scottsburg, who was just unstoppable. Mm-hmm. Uh, they Kind of not a big surprise, but I think in a lot of ways it was just as big a surprise who didn't make it. Now, probably wasn't a big surprise that nobody from our RTC area didn't make it. I mean, it's been a long time now. But, I mean, nobody from South Bend at all, and that was after, you know, Marcus Burton was Mr. Basketball last year, but nobody from the South Bend area at all made it. Nobody from Fort Wayne made it. Wow. Nobody, like nobody from the Fort Wayne area. Hmm. Uh. So that, I mean, that was pretty shocking. Only one player from the region, that was Tyler Parrish from Chesterton. Only one player from Evansville, that was uh, Tucker Tornada from Evansville Memorial. I mean, there's been kind of, and, and nobody from Class 1A. So I think there's been kind of this talk about, and, and we talked, and again, this goes back to, and, and my, you know, this goes back to the Lillian Frazier thing from a couple years ago, which is, are they noticing anybody outside of that the indie area? And I mean, we were wondering if they weren't if they weren't noticing anybody in smaller towns. It doesn't seem like they're even, are they even noticing the kids in Fort Wayne? Yeah. I now um I, I fell out of ballot for the for the record I'm a voter for the boys. And for the record I I do vote for mostly small school kids and I vote for a lot of kids. I voted for Sean Richard. Now, did I expect Sean Richard to be named to the Indian All-Star team? No, I did not. Mm-hmm. I also voted for Jack Rogers. I voted for Drew McKegg. I voted for Isaac Wright of Wabash. Those were all right. Those were all write-ins. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just feel like this. You know, everybody says, "Well, in 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 forty nine other states, it's just basketball." But here it's different. Well, isn't part of why it's different here that we celebrate kids in small towns? Mm-hmm. And yet. Um, all these kids who, uh, you know, in the Indy area who are, you know, average 12 points a game and they get the nod because they get their, you know, more eyeballs around them. And that's just very frustrating to me. You know, my, I, I mean, I, and I did vote for Javon Lewis from Fort Wayne Wayne, that point guard. Mm-hmm. So, and I voted for Keenan Garter of Fishers who made it. I voted for Jack Benner. I voted for, I voted Flory Badunga. So, I mean, I, and I, and I voted for Isaac Andrews of Wapahani who, Absolutely deserved it. If you saw that semi-state highlights, that was incredible. Yeah, it's about two thirty. It's two thirty footers, and then a step back twenty-five footer, 
in a three possession span that basically beats Fort Wayne Blackhawks single handedly. Yeah. And I voted for Evan Gagnon of North Newton. Again, I want, again, how are we going to make this uh, something that's going to be, a, a, I don't know, I want to say, I'm not going to say fair, but I'm going to say, are we going to acknowledge the entire state? Mm-hmm. And I mean, if we're not, but if we're not even picking kids from Fort Wayne, I mean, this is just crazy. Yeah. So it'll be talked about, I think, moving on. So there were some college signings uh, this week or some maybe some verbal commitments. Jackson Baker, a pioneer, is signed with Indiana Wesleyan for track. Um, Giselle Villegas of Culver is going to sign with IU South Bend for soccer. Shelby Olivares from Culver is going to sign with Manchester University for volleyball. And this isn't an athletic signing, but I really want to mention Wes Steininger, a kid we've covered a lot in cross country and in swimming. And he's playing some baseball this spring, believe it or not, on the JV. He's going to Vanderbilt and is going to do Army ROTC. And remember, Wes got a Lilly scholarship. So I was surprised he's going out of state, but I guess Vanderbilt's giving him a four year, four year ride as well. So. Congratulations to Wes. That's incredible. Yeah, yeah, that is. So, some good stuff there for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, let's get into some. Uh, let's get into some spring sports here. The uh, softball team, baseball team, they were able to get a few games in here earlier this week. And let's go right over to Fansler Field. I've got some uh, highlights from this one. I don't have a lot of highlights for this week, but I do have highlights for our game. On Tuesday at Fansler is a sectional rival and just rival in general, right? Yeah. Winnemac was in town. I mean, we talked about it in the broadcast, you know, all of the different uh, times that those two teams have met up and very important games over the years in softball. And, and Rochester hadn't beaten Winnemac since 2016. Yeah. Yeah, so let's take a look here. Bottom of the third here, Val, this is kind of where it all happened for the uh, Rochester Zebras and Mia Howdeshell gets them started. Yeah, it, it started with the bottom of the order, um, really keying the rally, and then Mia steals second. Yeah, you can't you can't get the girl out by hitting her with the ball as you're throwing yeah. it, but uh, so Mia able to, uh, and then she stays alive here with a, a throwback to third. So, right, Dara Strasser gets on base as well, and uh, Aubrey Wilson. I mean, wow, mm-hmm. what a start to her freshman year that she's had. And, it's a uh, two RBI double there, and yeah, Aubrey Miller gets in a pickle, but she's able to get back to third, and then eventually the third run of the inning would score on this sacrifice fly by Braylon Hunter. The throw, a good throw, might have gotten her, but it was a wild throw way over the catcher's head. So Miller scored. That made it three to nothing. If the man I know was about was Bria Rensberger. This this play here, and you know, yeah. got a new producer. He kind of missed a little bit there, but great job there by a couple of freshmen, uh, Medina and Wilson, to uh, to make that out. That was a really uh, big play in the game. Yeah, as uh, Winnemac was threatening. It was a really really big play in the game because I don't think they got another base run of the rest of the game. And I was talking with Bria. You know, she she talked about um, first of all. And I talked with Coach Jim Coleman as well. You know, Bria said that that first time through was her kind of her high fastball mm-hmm. that was really working, and then the changeup was really working after that. And Coach Coleman really said the changeup has improved a lot since the start of the year. And the little comebacker there to yeah. Rensberger, and mm-hmm. they get out of a little bit of a jam there in the mm-hmm. in the top of the fourth. And and I think yeah, I think the pitch that she was she that she was happiest about was the very last pitch of the game when she struck out Corinne Ulrich on a curveball. Mm-hmm. She said she's put a ton of work into that pitch Yeah, and got her looking on a curve she uh, that Ulrich she didn't think was expecting. And, you know, we, we I had to talk with, it was interesting talking with Bree again, a freshman, just talking about body language of hitters and how she can read that and she can tell if a hitter is confident or not mm-hmm. confident. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's she spent a lot of time in the circle. Yeah, I mean it's it's not a, a freshman that's coming in that's that's not played a lot. She's she's got a lot of circle time, and you can tell she's a very mature pitcher mm-hmm. uh, for her age. And 
great job there. They, uh, you know, shut out, not only beat Winnemac, but you shut them out, mm -hmm. you know, in a, in a big game. And who knows uh, who they'll face coming up in, in the uh, sectional back there at Fansler in a, in a little over a month. But uh, Winnemac uh, could be one of those teams. So, right. Um, and, you know, that's coming off of a, 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 an impressive comeback. They didn't get the win on Saturday, but – they did come back and, and uh, make it 8-7. I, I think they trailed by eight runs at one point against Pioneer at uh, Carroll, right? Right. Eight right there on 8-0, came, yeah. came back to with an 8-7. Yeah. Yeah, and um, Miley Heinzman had three hits in that game. I think she had two doubles and a single. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, yeah, I mean, getting production from, they got production from up and down the lineup, and they, they made the adjustments the second and third time through the order. Yeah. And you talked about that Wednesday game. Um, I didn't get any highlights put together on that one, but Logan Sport in town, kind of a strange way, uh, leading 6 um in the uh, fifth, wasn't it? Yeah, top at, of the fifth. Top yeah. of the fifth, and I, I don't really know what to say. I mean, uh, there was an ejection of one of the coaches and then uh, another ejection of uh, Coach Coleman. Yeah. And um, I don't know. You take Give me your take on it. Um. It all happened so fast. We were the the first ejection was kind of the umpire was I don't want to say nonchalant, but he was just kind of he just kind of did the you're out, but I didn't know what he was right. I didn't know what he was meaning, but he was actually ejecting David Musselman. Mm -hmm. And so at that point, then Coach Coleman comes out and he asks for time, and all of a sudden we have this kind of this awkward standoff. Mm -hmm. Um, where he's just standing there with his hand up. This goes on for what? A few seconds. 15, 10 seconds, 15 yeah, seconds. Yeah. We're just standing there like this, and we're just like, what's going on? And, you know, we're on TV at the same time trying to describe what's happening here. Mm -hmm. And then Coach Coleman is very, he wants to be careful because he, he says, if I step across the foul line, then before he grants me timeout, then... I could get in trouble here, mm -hmm. and I guess that's kind of what happened. I guess that's what happened. Yeah. yeah, he was. I mean, when the I, I think when that standoff standoff, so to speak, kind of mm -hmm. happened, he was inside the line, but yeah. he was trying to get. I I felt he was trying to get the the ump to acknowledge him. Yeah, I don't think he was trying to show him up or anything like that. I, it was just a really really weird situation, and uh, you know, from there it just got even weirder. I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you you wrote in your article there that uh, Coach Coleman pulled the girls off, intending to kind of talk to them and and try and regroup regroup them before he left. Right, right. And, and he said he is entitled to do that. Yeah, per the rules. Yeah, uh, that he that he doesn't have to leave immediately. That but he is allowed to talk to the girls and explain what is happening. Yeah, but so the girls come into the dugout. And then as soon as they get into the dugout, what within five seconds the umpire five ten seconds the umpire goes, "Are you, what do you say? Are you coming back out or are you, are you, are you continuing? Are you to continuing? Play? Yeah, with the game and and there was kind of no response, I guess. And then he just said, "We're done," and he kind of empties his pockets and walks off the field. Yeah, yeah. So and so, Coach Coleman shakes the hand of, and you could tell he was kind of apologetic to Coach Cripe of Logansport. Yeah. And he and he and he repeated that, and when I talked to him after the game, and then then we had a handshake line, and that was it. Yeah, yeah. So, it, it kind of a weird situation, right? And a, a forfeit implied. Right. I I wasn't even comfortable using the word forfeit in my article, but I didn't know what was would be a better word. Yeah, because forfeit kind of implies that you're losing, and you acknowledge that you've lost. Yeah, this is kind of the umpire forfeiting you. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Um, kind of a strange situation for sure. And you know, last night's game at Triton uh, was not uh, able to be played due to the weather. So the next mm -hmm. game actually is going to be tonight at home against Culver Community. So we'll see. I would assume that both of the coaches that were ejected will be not able to coach tonight. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. So, but because I would imagine anytime somebody gets ejected from a game that the umpire has to file a report with the IHSAA yeah. to make sure so then that the next game's umpire is aware and yeah 
So. But so what his side of the story is, we don't know. I Again, I, I'm not against interviewing umpires after the game if they have a different story. And we've seen that at different levels of sports. We see that in, you know, in, in NBA games or, uh, they, you know, if where we've seen NBA officials acknowledge that they missed a call after a, after a game, mm-hmm. if it was a particularly big call. I mean, there ha- I, I want there to be accountability on both sides, and I don't want the umpire to think that I'm only interested in one side of the story. But Yeah, they don't usually stick around. But either. they usually don't stick yeah. around either. Yeah. It's oftentimes for football and basketball games at Rochester, the umpires are introduced before the game, or at least you, you find out what their names are. But they didn't introduce these umpires, so I don't know what the home plate umpire's name is. Mm-hmm. Um, he, I mean, I assume I'm pretty sure we've had him before at Rochester, but I mean, I just don't. It was just a peculiar circumstance. Yeah. Well, we'll see how the the girls can regroup. Obviously, it's a really young team. Um, you know, will this have any lasting effects on the team? So that, yeah. that'll be the thing there. Right. And continuing just to get three more innings of at-bats against Brooklyn Haggerty would have been helpful. Right, yeah. I know it wasn't going well, but, I mean, again, like and like Coach, again, like Coach Coleman says, he goes, I, I was going to tell him that, you know, I don't want you to give up. I want you to keep fighting. I know mm-hmm. this is hard that she's refacing a really good pitcher. Yeah. I mean, she struck out 10 of the 13 batters she faced. but Yeah. And then to have that happen, that was just awkward. So, yeah, yeah. Home with Culver, home with Culver today. Home with Eastern Monday. Home with Southwood Wednesday. At John Glenn on Thursday, yeah. and then at Twin Lakes next Friday. Yeah. So busy, uh, busy schedule coming up here. Let's take a quick break here. We come back. Let's talk some Rochester baseball. Okay. Stop on by to In Your Hardware for all your home project needs. With a broad selection of garden supplies, tools, and paints featuring brands like Milwaukee, Diablo, and their newest paint line Valspar, you can be sure that Inyarts will supply you with the most top rated equipment. And if you need something for a quick job, check out Inyarts Rental Selection to get you going. Stop on in at 1619 Main Street, Rochester, or call 574 223 4920 to see how Inyarts friendly staff can help you. Paysetters Real Estate knows that buying and selling properties can be a tough and complicated task. That's why we are here to provide you with our full service process where we walk with you every step of the way. Whether you're looking to buy a home or you're looking to sell, Paysetters Real Estate is here for you. Call 574-223-5000 or visit us online at www.paysettersre.net. At First Federal Savings Bank, you can bank on the go. With the First Federal Savings Bank mobile app, you can check account balances, transfer money, view account history, deposit your checks, and pay your bills. If you want your mobile banking done easy, download the First Federal Savings Bank mobile app today. The app is available for both Apple and Android phones and tablets. Just type in First Federal Savings Bank in the search bar and look for the white star with the green background. There are some things in life you just can't plan for. But here at Evans Agency, we strive to help you have all your bases covered when it comes to protecting your assets from whatever life throws your way. Whether it's home, business, auto, or life, Evans Agency has got you covered. With a heart and hand for friendship, Evans Agency has been serving the community for 20 years. Call 574-224-6988 or visit online at www.evansagencyllc.com. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val for a Friday afternoon. Rochester baseball, Val. Um, scoring runs doesn't seem to be a problem for him, but uh, the one thing that uh, we've not really had to worry too much about for, for the last few years is pitching. and seems to be a little bit of a struggle on the mound right now, trying to, trying to get their groove a little bit. Mm-hmm. Home opener last night was uh, postponed till next Thursday, so we're we're looking forward to uh, getting Rochester home at uh, Bob Copeland tonight against the uh, Culver Academy Eagles, who are coming in at two and zero. So it'll be an mm-hmm. interesting matchup there. But let's go back to last weekend. Uh, a good weekend for the uh, Zebras down at Eastern. Yeah, finished somewhat in, finished in third place. Yeah. Uh, of course, they won that tournament last year. So I mean, they had high expectations but you know they beat they beat a good Adam Central team 5 to 3 last Friday. The game ended about about 10:10 10, 10 p.m. Hmm. Yeah, pretty late start. We had actually the lights went out at 10 o'clock exactly at 10 o'clock. Yeah. Right. The lights were on timer. a timer, yeah. So it was a beautiful new ballpark though at 
Eastern. They have, mm-hmm. They've got their two separate baseball fields there. Yeah, one they for kept their, their old one. They kept their old one, mm-hmm. and now they have this new one that's a turf field, and it's really nice. Um, but uh, it's kind of it's a little bit off school grounds. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's yeah, beautiful. But yeah, the lights run a timer. But that Adam Central team won 17 games last year, and Rochester beat them. Five to three. Tanner Reinhardt's pitched really well. Pitched six innings, struck out ten. Uh, er, uh, no, I think yeah, uh, struck out ten, and then uh, offensively they got just enough. Um, you, uh, again, uh, Jake Cipher has been just terrific all year. He had a big two-run single. But it really started with a base hit by that whole four-run rally they had in the third inning. Started with a base hit by Parker Casper, the number nine hitter, a freshman, and you can tell he's really a competitor already. He and he and Brady Coleman are both freshmen, but they're both going to be comfortable right away mm-hmm. off the bat competing. Um, and they were able to, they were up five to one, held on to win five to three. Then they lose to Peru four to one in their semifinal game uh, Saturday morning. Uh, actually, that was about like a one. I think that was more like a one o'clock start. That was Ian Potts of Peru who really shut him down. Uh, it was four to nothing going into the seventh. Rochester scored one, and Carson Pollock came up with two men on base, but Potts struck him out to end the game. So, uh, but that was more of a pitcher's duel. And then they come right back and score thirteen on Bluffton and beat them thirteen to four. Mm-hmm. And I, I guess the, mo- the most encouraging thing about the Bluffton game was that you know Colton Fervida started, and they used Brant Beck and. Um, I think Casper might have seen some amount of time in that game. So they didn't have to use either of the two big pitchers, Reinerts or Pollock, mm-hmm. in that Bluffton game to finish in third place. Uh, Northwestern wound up beating Peru to win that tournament. And then it was interesting. Northwestern then beat Peru again on Tuesday in their regular season matchup. So hmm. keep keep that in mind because Northwestern will be in the TRC next year and they'll, yeah. they'll, they'll be uh, a good team, I think. And then Rochester had a crazy game at, at Plymouth on Tuesday where they lose 20 to 15, they were actually they scored four in the top of the first, and Plymouth scored seven in the bottom of the first. So it was just kind of one of those days. Pollock really again everybody they put on the mound struggled. Pollock, uh, Dunphy, uh, nobody really came away unscathed. Having said that, Rochester led 12 to nine going into the bottom of the fifth, and Plymouth scored eight. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden it was a 17 to 12 game, and they scored three more in the sixth to go up 20 to 12. Rochester got three in the top of the seventh, but Plymouth was able to hold them off. Huge game for uh, for Colton Fervita. He had a homer. He had five RBIs. Um, Coleman had three hits and two RBIs. Cipher had two more RBIs. He is, I mean, he has just been racking up the RBIs like crazy so far. Um, you know, Brant Beck had a couple hits. He's really coming on with the bat. Um, Pollock, of course, is, I think he had a two more RBIs. You know, Pollock is one of the best hitters in the area. Reinert's had a double and two walks and two RBIs. So, yeah, I mean, this team is pretty loaded offensively. Uh, even even Brady Beck has been uh, contributing some on the uh, offensively. Yeah. So they got Academy tonight at home. They go to Caston on Saturday and back home against Delphi. On Monday, that's you know turned into a uh, pretty good rivalry with Delphi over the last few years. And Rochester's really had Delphi's number, except for that one game where they played in the regional when yeah. Delphi, yeah, got them got after em. losing the regular season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then they start uh, conference play then next week as home, well. Home with Southwood, who won their one A sectional last year. Yeah, uh, that'll be on Wednesday, and then uh, that Pioneer game on Thursday. Yeah, make up game from yesterday. So. Mm-hmm. Busy, uh, busy, busy schedule coming up, and you know it. It kind of seems like it always happens like that. Obviously, with the uh, the weather, just kind of gets into the way. And right, exactly. We get we get rain the first week or two in April. Games get pushed back, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden, we're kind of you know you're up against a wall where you're playing four or five games in a week. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a little girls tennis. Boy, they had a uh, really nice uh, tournament last weekend over at uh, John Glenn uh, and ended up winning that thing. Right, it's a it's a four team tournament with Rochester, Laville, and Knox joining John Glenn. And Rochester went eleven and four in fifteen matches to win that. Uh, Ella McCarter went three and zero at uh, one singles, um, and then uh, I believe it was Riley Clevenger who went three and zero at three singles. And the one doubles team of Audrey Bollinger and Chloe Nichols went three and zero. So yeah. 
That's really great because, you know, Olivia Bailey has been out with a hip injury, so she hasn't been able to pair with Audrey Bollinger like they did last year. But, boy, the way Chloe Nichols has played, she's gonna have, they're going to have to find a spot for her somewhere in that varsity lineup. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Taylor Howard is a girl who's, uh, you know, she's gone, I think, two and three to start the year, but she's a girl who has gone from doubles to singles, and she's playing two singles. So, yeah, um, you know, definitely they, they've been working hard in practice. Uh it was interesting talking with Adrian Pollock. She said, we don't really work. She said, the, the serving's been pretty strong. We don't really even have to work at that. But more just, you know, they're another, you know, kind of let's prey on our opposing team's weaknesses and kind of chip away at that. Yeah. But so they, that was a nice win, but then they lose to Tippecanoe Valley 4-1 to on Tuesday in their home opener. Again, uh, Bollinger and Nichols won 6-1, 6-1, so a really nice win for them. But, boy, Valley's really experienced. You know, um, Kerrigan Callahan was our RTC player of the year. You know, she beat Ella McCarter in a really tough matchup. It came down to a third set tie break. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was after Ella won the second set 6 1. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, Ella's definitely improved. And then, um, uh, then you know, Rochester beat LaVille 5 to nothing on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, pretty dominant performance against LaVille. Lost two games total in five yeah. matches. Yeah. yeah. Six zero six zero six two and six zero right yeah 6-0. yeah Taylor yeah. Howard lost two games in the first set and that was it yeah but you know Clevenger she's you know she's really improved at three singles so and, and McCarter has improved and then um, yeah just uh, just a and then you know um, Sophie McCall and Abriella St Martin wanted to give them a shout out for their win at two doubles yeah. So they they got postponed last night, correct? They had a did they, they were one supposed last to night? travel to North Judson, but that yeah. got postponed to April twenty sixth. Yeah. So then coming up, uh, looks like they're going to Triton uh, next week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, at Triton Monday, and then they begin TRC play with a home match against Peru. You know that's going to be tough. Peru is always so solid, and then a home match with Whitco on Wednesday. And Whitco was very good uh, last year as well. So yeah, we'll see how they do. Golf team got underway last week as well. Second place at, at their home invite, shot a three thirty six. Second place, I think, out of thirteen teams. Chesterton won it with a three seventeen, and then Rochester with a three thirty six. Culver Academy shot three thirty seven. So for Rochester to be Culver Academy, that's a really good sign. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think they broke three forty last year until conference mm-hmm. until middle of May. Good start then, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Noah Riffle shot a seventy seven. He lost to a kid from Chesterton in the playoff for medalist. Still a 77, where the weather's probably not great and the wind is probably whipping all over the place. Yeah. That's a really good performance by Noah. Isaac Heishman, freshman, shoots an 84 in his varsity debut. What a performance by Isaac. 85 for J.R. McLaughlin. Davis Reaney's moved up to the varsity, shot a 90. And then uh, Ashton Musselman shot a 95. Yeah. But that, it's going to be competitive for that. Those last couple of varsity spots, and you got a kid like Robert Bazo who's maybe hoping to get a shot. Um, but yeah, it's, it's looks like a, looking like a pretty good team, even though obviously they, they lost a really big part of the team with Drew, when Drew Strasser graduated. Yeah. So uh, match was postponed with Valley and and uh, Culver Academy to April twenty April twenty ninth. That's a Monday. Yeah. So yeah. And then they got one coming up uh, on Saturday. Yeah, like. they go into the Don Dickin Classic. Uh, that is at Stonehenge in Warsaw, so that will be that'll be a really good tournament with a really good field. Um, and it'll start. It's an afternoon start. I think one it starts at one thirty. Um, then they've got a home three way home match against Winnemac and Culver on Monday. Uh, we think Culver only has one boy. So, but yeah, Coach Shell is coaching both the boy, the girls and the boys at Winnemac. So we'll see how they do. Obviously, the Winnemac is probably the more important one because Winnemac is a sectional rival. Mm-hmm. Culver isn't. Yeah. Um, and then they travel to Rock Hollow on Wednesday to take on Peru, and Wabash will be there for it to make it a three-way. Mm-hmm. And then track, they uh, looks like didn't get a whole lot going this week. But. Yeah, I, I talked with Ryan Hell. Um, they were they were, they did have a meet at Manchester the other day that also included Wabash. She said that there's there was kind of a breakdown in their software, so I don't have results yet. As soon as I get the results, I'll put them online. Uh, but uh, yeah. Uh, we we don't know how they did yet, um, and then they they were supposed to have a home meet against Whitco on Thursday that got canceled due to the weather, 
So it was supposed to be a really, really busy week because now, now I only got one meet. That's going to be the, at the Oak Hill Relays coming up on Saturday. Okay. And then they traveled to Lewis Cass on Tuesday for a three-way meet that also include, that will also include Peru. Okay. So I don't ever recall Rochester having a dual meet with Lewis Cass before. Yeah. Well, they're, they're in the conference but now. But now they're in the conference, yeah. so it makes yeah. sense, I guess. Yeah. And I, they've always had a dual meet with Peru. Now it's just a three-way. So we'll yeah. see how that turns out. But that will be a good uh, indicator. Yeah. Uh, Lewis we, Cass has a couple runners that uh, can go pretty fast. Okay. Especially on the girls' side. Yeah, that means Afton Griffin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, see how that comes out there. So, let's take another quick break. When we come back, we'll talk a little Argus Dragons and some casting comments. Okay, all right. Kriskin's Pools and Spas is your local contractor for all your pool and hot tub installation needs. With a wide selection to choose from, Kriskin's is sure to hook you up with exactly what you need, no matter what your budget is. To learn more about our services. Visit Kriskinspoolsandspas.com, call 574-857-3100, or stop on by at 7448 Liberty Avenue in Fulton to see how Kriskins can help you. Here we go, Billy. Swing hard. As your local agent, I know you. I know every Saturday, your son Billy plays Little League. We sponsor his team. And we know you love parking way too close to the field. That's why we tailor a unique policy for you and your car. Because sometimes, something from out of left field can literally come from out of left field. That's simple human sense. Ask the Jennings Insurance Agency in Argus and Rochester if auto owners make sense for you. Spray foam is not only going to seal up the structure, but it's doing that insulation at the same time. So with a seamless application with the spray foam, you get all of that. You get your air barrier, you get your insulation, and obviously with, with one of the products, you get a vapor barrier as well. Hi, I'm Ashley Samsel with the Insulation Guys. And I'm Kyle Hoover. Let us be your solution to modern energy efficiency. Now more than ever, your business needs fast and reliable internet. Whether you're hosting a meeting, printing invoices, or keeping inventory, your business deserves the best internet speeds to keep everything running smoothly. And to get the best speeds, you need a fiber connection. Here at RTC, we have the solution for you. Contact me, Steve Stricker, to see how we can best serve you, or you can also visit us online at rtc1.com. All right, welcome back to Talking Sports with Val. Sorry about that last commercial there. <laughs> Let's talk some Argus Dragons here, Val. The softball team uh, hasn't haven't been able to get a win yet, but it seems like they're playing some pretty competitive contests. Yeah, that's what I seem to have noticed as well. They lost to Triton in a doubleheader, lost eight to seven and thirteen to two um, the other day. Uh, you know, they've got the two Stackhouse sisters, Ava and Ivy. Um, they've got a you know, a really experienced senior in Briley Elliott, um, who's a big a Shelby Wiser. I think they've got like six seniors on that team. Mm -hmm. So it's not it's not going to be a lack of experience, but I think it's still going to be you know the pitching part is going to be kind of key to to whether they can have su some success this year. But they've had a whole week off, and they, you know, so let's see how they do when they travel to River, make the long trip to River Forest on Saturday, and then they get another game at Laville. I think coming up. I think that's Monday. So we'll see how they do against Laville. Yeah. Yeah, Laville one's always a, a good one to uh, kind of get you a little barometer. They're, yeah. They're usually, you know, fairly competitive with Laville. Yeah. So right. see if they can pick something up there. Uh, baseball team, same situation. They're they're still uh, winless, but, boy, they're they're right there. Right. They lost to Culver 4-3. to three. Believe it or not, that was a no-hitter. Yeah, in the game they scored three runs, but Culver pitched a no hitter. That was the two McEwen twins, and yeah, I, I've talked about them. The McEwen twins—they are going to be hard to hit. Jonas pitched the first six innings, and then Caleb pitched the seventh. Jonas struck out fifteen. Yeah, uh, there were some walks and some errors involved there. So Argus did manage three runs, but yeah, uh, this is an Argus team that struggled to hit a little bit. They've struggled to hit against velocity. 
Yeah, we've seen combined no hitters before, but uh, I can't recall ever seeing uh, a set of twins throw a combined no hitter. Yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, as for Argus, you know, uh, again, I like Willie Bereni, the Trump brothers. Um, Brady Montgomery is a good player. Boyd Paul is, uh, you can tell he's just a really good at. We saw him on the soccer field. Boyd Paul can play some shortstop. Mm -hmm. uh, Jackson Kidd, they got in center field. Jackson's when he's not pitching. Um, I, I again, I I like the you know the pitching. I like some aspects of the defense of this team, but really they got to get the bat on the ball and force force teams to make some plays defensively. Yeah, yeah. they they've just struggled to handle uh, much velocity this year. Yeah, but they've got uh, okay. The game they were supposed to play Bethany Christian tonight. That game has already been postponed. Has it? We don't have a makeup date. They will travel to Bethany tomorrow morning at eleven. It's supposed for it was supposed to be the second game of a two game set, um, so we'll see. There there are only three teams in the Hoosier Plains that have a baseball team: Argus, Bethany Christian, and Elkhart Christian. Um, Lakeland Christian doesn't have a team this year. Trinity Greenlawn doesn't have a team. Hmm. Career Academy doesn't have a team this year. So hmm. just those three. So these conference games are pretty important. Yeah, obviously because there just aren't that many of them. Yeah. So yeah, that's where Argus is right now. Casting softball, uh, boy, they just haven't played a whole lot. They've only gotten two games in, just okay. the, the weather. Right? And we have some breaking news. Uh, they were supposed to play Kokomo at home tonight. That game will now be at Kokomo, and the start time has been moved back by an hour from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Okay. So it sounds like, I don't know if they were having some field issues at Casting, but the game has now been moved to Kokomo, yeah. and it will start at 6 p.m. Yeah. But that'll be a really good test. Yeah. Do they have turf? I know they got a really nice stadium. I didn't, couldn't remember if I if it was turf or not. You're gonna have to tell me. Yeah. I know the stadium is beautiful. Uh -huh. I mean that whole facility down there. They've they've redone the baseball, the softball, the the football. I mean, wow. Mm. It's it's neat. Yeah. But uh, I I guess I've seen the stadium, but I didn't really. I, I thought maybe it was turf, but I don't. Yeah. Maybe that's why they moved it. Okay. But. But yeah, um, you know they were coming off a sixteen to nothing win in five innings over Culver earlier in the week. Eight Ks and five innings for Addison Zippelman. I think we talked about it during the game about um, some of the, you know, some of the slight kind of changes that Coach uh, Burks has made after losing. You know, you lose a Kinsey Mollenkopf and a Bailey Harness to graduation. So what's the team going to look like? Uh, you know, Kylie Logan's batting third. Annie Harsh has been hitting cleanup. McKenna Middleton's moved. From left field to second base is hitting fifth. Um, Alexa Finke's moved from right field to center field this year. Um, the freshman Maddie Douglas is playing right field. Um, but Macy Hinderleiter, that hasn't changed. She's hitting in her customary number nine spot in the mm. batting order and is really causing problems from there. Yeah. So obviously with the, the way that their schedule started, that's going to mean that they're going to get really busy really quick. There's there's a, a ton of games coming up here in the next week for them. Right, and they got to go to Peru tomorrow morning. I mean, so they, you know, they get back from Kokomo, and then they hop right back on the bus and go to Peru tomorrow. And then North White on Monday, that's obviously a sectional opponent. At Judson, uh, that's coming up on Tuesday. And they also have to go to Northfield on Thursday. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's weird is they they started the year ranked number two in the polls behind Tecumseh. They're not they've dropped to number five even though they're undefeated. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, Tecumseh isn't number one anymore. Clay City's number one. Hmm. Clay City must have a heck of a team if they're better than Tecumseh because we saw Tecumseh last year and they are. Yeah, and they, they they've got pretty much everybody back. Right, including the flower girl who mm -hmm. pitched a shutout and hit a home run in the state championship game yeah. and the <laughs> uh, the Donahue mm -hmm. the catcher. I mean. Yeah, yeah. She's she's Division One. She's going to Evansville. I mean, they're they're good. Yeah, yeah. Baseball team uh, still looking for their first win of the uh, season for uh, Caston. Yeah, a couple of hard fought games against Manchester. They lost six to nothing and seven to five in a double header. But the six to nothing game it was actually one to nothing going into the seventh inning. Just some poorly timed errors. Mm -hmm. I think that's cost them a little bit. Obviously, the freshman Eli Montgomery is kind of fitting into this lineup. He's gonna, he's not, he's another one of those freshmen who's kind of beyond his years. He's not gonna struggle too much, but um, they've struggled to score, and then they lose to Wabash sixteen to three in five innings on uh, Tuesday. I think that might say more about Wabash actually. Mm -hmm. um, it looks like the Apaches can really hit. 
um, this year. But that's that's a tough. That's usually a tough game for Caston to play Wabash, especially early in the season. So we'll see how they rebound from that. And they've got some games coming up as well. Yeah, we have some Caston baseball news. They are they are not playing North White tonight. That game has been postponed. Okay. Instead, they have picked up a game with Clinton Prairie, yeah. and that game will be played tonight okay. at Loeb Stadium in Lafayette. Okay. So the, that, that nice the ballpark. Stadium. Yeah, yeah. The beautiful yeah. ballpark in Lafayette. Huh. They're playing Clinton Prairie, so that will be a good test. Yeah. And, and then they and they drive back home, and they get Rochester at home tomorrow. That game is still on, so I guess the field is in decent enough shape where they will play at 11 o'clock tomorrow morning against the Zebras. Okay. And then a JV game will follow at about 1 p.m. Okay. And then uh, two games set with Triton beginning uh, Monday, home with Triton Monday, at Triton Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, we've ta- I've talked about Triton. They are very, they are much improved. Mm-hmm. And they're, Triton is loaded with freshmen and sophomores, but they are talented. Yeah. And the days of you just showing up and beating Triton are over. Yeah. They will, you all have to win those games. You all have to earn it. Yeah. And then they travel to Peru on Thursday. Yeah. And Peru's loaded with seniors and loaded with pitching. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a challenge, you know, that Triton back-to-back. That's, you know, if you kind of forgot the HNAC, that's the way they do it. They play one at home and one at the uh, opponent's place there yeah. on uh, HNAC games. And then they, they sprinkle in some Saturday double headers for conference as well. Yeah. And then uh, the uh, the golf team for Caston. They haven't hit the course yet, but that will change tomorrow when they host the Caston invite at Pondview. Okay. And Jeremy Rentschler is the new coach, and eight kids have come out for golf for Caston. Mm-hmm. So that's a really good sign because I think they're you know um, there, there was concern they had some graduation losses and they've struggled to kind of put together a full team at times. Like eight kids came out, so that is great. And Coach Wrenchler, you can tell he's got them. In th- I went to picture day. You can tell they're enthusiastic about it. So mm-hmm, mm-hmm. really good sign. Uh, but, yeah, so we'll see how they do there. And then they're at Winnemac on Tuesday. And they have a home match against Tippecanoe Valley and North Miami coming up on Thursday at Pondview. All right. And then track. They had a, they had a meet with Lewis Cass and Southwood on Tuesday. We haven't heard how they did yet. They had that home invite the other day. Um well, I believe it was the uh, the Carroll boys and who won it, um, and the was it the Pioneer girls, or I'm trying to remember who which girls team won it. But yeah, um, it's a team with a pretty good numbers for Coach Zimmerman, but kind of a lo- lack of experience at this point. But yeah, they had a meet with Lewis Cass and Southwood. That was po- that that didn't happen. Or at least we haven't seen the results yet. And then they were supposed to travel to North Judson on Thursday. For a three-way matchup that was also supposed to involve Tri Township, and that got canceled because of the weather. So they've got an, a home three-way match with North Miami and Manchester on Monday, and then they've got a home four-way match, four, home four-way meet with Culver, Elkhart Christian, and Lakeland Christian on Thursday. Okay, busy week coming up. Yeah. So, are they going to Winnemac on Saturday? No, they're not. No. Okay. All right. All right, well, that wraps it up here for uh, Caston. We'll come back and we'll uh, we'll talk some Culver and some Pioneer when we get back. Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to set you up with a new set of wheels. From coming on the lot to driving off in your new dream car, Mike Anderson strives to give you the smoothest dealership experience. Not only that, but Mike Anderson in Rochester is here to lend a hand with their service center to keep your ride running. Stop on in for a test drive or call today at 574-223-2711 to see how Mike Anderson in Rochester can steer you in the right direction. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, we strive to provide our community with a better alternative. We respect the many choices our patients have when it comes to health care needs. When they choose us, we go above and beyond to offer them personalized service and care that will consistently remind them of why we are a superior choice to other pharmacies. Pharmacy care should be proactive when possible. It should be customized to patient needs. It should strive for better health outcomes. It should help manage costs. At Webb's Family Pharmacy, our mission is to provide the pharmacy care you deserve. Fulton County REMC is proud to offer the Operation Roundup Charitable Giving Program. Through Operation Roundup, Fulton County REMC is able to give to local organizations and communities by simply rounding up your monthly bill and donating the change. Since its inception, Operation Roundup has generated over $50 million in charitable donations throughout 260 electric cooperatives. To learn more about this great program, visit www.fultoncountyremc.com 
or call in at 574-223-3156. Steve Moore Agency is now offering an app to make viewing your policies, make payments, and file claims so much easier and convenient. You can download Steve Moore's Insurance Agent app from the Google Play Store or the App Store. Just search up Insurance Agent and look for the blue app with the large I. If you want to know more about our services, you can call us at 574-223-3010 or visit us online at stevemoreagency.com. And welcome back here talking sports with Val for a Friday afternoon. Let's move on to Culver. Val, let's talk a little bit about Culver softball. Coach Overmeyer starting his second year. Culver off to an 0-2 start. Boy, tough to start your season against a team that made the state finals last year, but that's what Culver had to do when they played cast and lost 16 to nothing in five innings. Then they played Culver Academy and lost 8-1 to on Wednesday. So off to an 0-2 start. You know, they take on, you know, again, it's a young Culver team that will take on a young Rochester team tonight. We'll see how that goes at Fansler. And then they travel to Valley on Monday, and that's a young Valley team that has only one senior on it. Mm -hmm. And then they go to Elkhart Christian on Tuesday. Um, Culver, they've got a freshman pitcher in Aiden Molbash. Um, Hayden Lute is also, she can also pitch them. She's just a sophomore, so it's a pretty young uh, Culver team. Mm -hmm. but they've been struggling to put runs up on the board through two games. But obviously when you face somebody like Addison Zimpleman, that's you not going to be easy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We don't, Culver Academy, I don't want to say anything about Culver Academy just because it's a team that really fluctuates from year to year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Uh, but I, I know Coach Overmeyer, he emailed me the other day, he said, this team has a lot of potential, Yeah, what we have. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how they do down here at Rochester uh, coming up tonight. That'll be a, a good test for them to see, you know, can they can they really compete with the Rochester Zebras or not. Right. And the the, the, the thing we think we've said a lot about Culver softball, can they throw strikes? Mm -hmm. Just throw strikes, make the opponent put the ball in play, and then once – once that happens, can you feel the ball? Right. But I think pitching and defense will be key to their success. Yeah. Uh, we already talked about baseball picking up that win against Argus. Right. And we have some news. We think we talked about – we said said something about Coach Pazin. He's not the coach anymore. Shane Lowry is the coach. Oh, really? Shane was the assistant coach last year. He's now the head coach this year. So they are off to a one-on-one -one start. They lost to Triton, ship 6-1. to one. That's a usually a pretty solid Tritonship team. Mm -hmm. That's a sectional rival. They lose six to one on Saturday. So, uh, and then they come back and they beat uh, Argus four to three. Uh, Jack Rogers has come out for baseball. He does play baseball. Uh, so this is Adria Glass plays baseball. Really? Okay. Uh, so <laughs> the exchange I, didn't, I don't know how much yeah. baseball they play in Spain, but okay, here we go. Yeah. So they do have six seniors on this team, but they're also. Again, I, I think the heart and soul of this team are the sophomores. Yeah. Uh, with the McEwen brothers. Uh, but Hayden Parker's going to play a key role on this team. But the number situation is really good. And then there's some freshmen who are going to contribute as well. So we'll see how uh, how this team um, improves. But I think the pitching part is they're pretty solid there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's good because, like we said, with the, the way that the HNAC is set up, you know, you're going to be playing back to back nights against HNAC opponents. Mm -hmm. And so. You need to have a good, solid one and two punch. Right. Yeah. You need a number two pitcher in the Hoosier mm -hmm. North. Yeah. Um, they were supposed to play Culver Academy last night. That game got rained out. So Culver Academy now comes to Rochester. We'll see if they're a little rusty. But yeah. Uh, but Culver, yeah, Culver got rained out last night. So now they, they have the weekend off. Now they they start Hoosier North play at Laville Monday, at home with Laville Tuesday. Yeah. And that's be... a Laville team that th I saw Laville play there, and they're pretty solid. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, they got some athletes. You would think that, uh, yeah, Zarnecki, Zarnecki yeah. he's a good baseball player, too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, it's the same, same names you kind of hear about over and over again. They really, they get a really good catcher as well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, the Wolf, I think Wolford is the pitcher's name, or, uh, he's really a solid. If he's their number two, he's a solid number two. He mm -hmm. might be even be their number one. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they, they've got some pitchers with velocity. So we'll see how Culver reacts. And then a home game with Marquette Catholic on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And that's a sectional opponent. Um, I believe Marquette Catholic won the sectional last year, but uh, it was, what, one to nothing over Triton? I mean, they're... 
they're good, but they're not overwhelmingly good, and that's a team that Culver should be able to compete with, I think. Yeah. So golf, you said uh, just one one golfer this year. Alex Stacy, I think is the. I got the roster. He, he's the only name listed on it. So, uh, good luck to him. Yeah, <laughs> we'll yeah. see how they do. And then Culver Track. Yeah, they were supposed to. They have not had an outdoor meet yet. Um, they were supposed to travel to Triton on Thursday, and Winnemac was supposed to be there for a three way meet, but that got postponed to May second. Okay. And then uh, Pioneer Softball, we talked a little bit about that. They were at Carroll with Rochester and Carroll on Saturday, and they went 2-0 and on the day. Yeah, 8-7 to over Rochester and then 12-6 to over Carroll. Um, the speed, you know, uh, you could tell this was – Coach Thomas was maybe trying some different things in terms of the lineup. Ava Ott led off the Rochester game. Cameron Newby led off the batting order in the Carroll game. Uh, Ava Ott DP'd the first game. She played second base the second game. Emma Sells moved between second base and right field. Uh, so definitely trying some different things. Uh, Kylie Attinger was the left fielder in one game and was the DP in another game. So, um, yeah, different kind of trying some different lineups. Lois Lair was the shortstop in the Rochester game and pitched in the Carroll game. Uh, I know you've talked a lot about Lois. This was the first time I got a chance to see her pitch. Um, sh- she's got a lot of spin on her pitches. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, again, just having her and then Caitlin Haynes. I mean, last year just they ran out of pitching about the middle of the season. And, again, kudos to Addie Kripe and, and Belle Blick and staff and, uh, for trying to fill in. But And Emma Sells pitched some too. But this is going to be a lot more stable of a situation. Having said that, they lost to Lewis Cass on Tuesday, 12 to 11. Mm-hmm. That was their first meeting since Lewis Cass beat him in last year's sectional final, and Pioneer led 10 to 2 going into the bottom of the sixth. And Lewis Cass scored eight to tie it at 10. Pioneer scores one in the top of the seventh, and Lewis Cass scores two in the bottom of the seventh to win at 12 to 11. So a yeah. heartbreaker of a loss. But again, Kylie Adinger, she is going to be she's going to be tough to keep off the base because of her speed and her just her ability to put the ball in play. Yeah, busy schedule as uh, most of our softball teams yeah. have as far as coming up games. I got to interview Casey Webb the other day, and you could tell she's just an, it's just going to be so much easier on her to catch these pitchers who are now a lot more experienced. Mm-hmm. I really enjoyed speaking with Casey, and you know she's kind of the one slugger in the lineup, mm-hmm. I guess you'd say. But Addie and Addie Kripe is probably the best defensive center fielder in our in our area as well. She made a really nice play against Rochester, you know, with a one run lead in the seventh inning. Yeah, yeah. So coming up, games: Western, North Miami, Delphi, Winnemac, Triton. All, all of those Faith. at home. Yeah. yeah, wow. Western at home today. I, I was trying to remember the name of the Western superstar. I remember. I looked it up. Brinley Erb, E R B. Okay. She had twenty-one homers and had seventy-four RBIs last year as a freshman. Not bad. Not bad. <laughs> freshman. As a freshman, so wow. she's a sophomore now. They get yeah. her. She's six for eleven on the season this year. So they get her tonight. Um, the North Miami game starts at 10.30 tomorrow morning. The Delphi game will start right after that around 12.30. The okay. Delphi game was supposed to be played on Thursday. It got rained out. Yeah. So they pushed it just after the North Miami game. So Yeah. We've seen them do that a couple times where yeah. they would have a double header with two different teams. Yeah. 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 So And that's Delphi is usually pretty solid. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, and North Miami is always solid. And then Winnemac on Monday, obviously a big you – know, you know Winnemac will be ready for that one because Pioneer knocked Winnemac out of the sectional last year. So that's also at uh, her Kaufman Stadium. And then at Triton Tuesday, you know, that means Lena Dahl, who's a pretty solid pitcher. Um, you're going to have to wait her out, uh, maybe hope to get some uh, – and put pressure on that Triton defense. I think it'll mm-hmm. be key. And then at Faith Christian on Thursday. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Pioneer Baseball, we were supposed to see them last night, but obviously that got pushed back. So we'll see them uh, on RTC4 next week. But uh, still looking for their first win of the season. Heartbreaker. Yeah, they, they start the season last Saturday, lose to Cops 2-1. to one. That game was 0-0 after six innings. Um, Pioneer scores one in the top of the seventh, and Cops comes back with two in the bottom of the seventh to win it. Mm-hmm. Um, Braden Erickson had a no-hitter through six innings in that game. And he had 10 K. So, again, he's going to be fine. I don't think there's any worry about him. Mm-hmm. And they lose to lose to Delphi, uh, 11 to six on Tuesday. I think Braden had two home runs in that game. 
Yeah. So their schedule obviously is going to get real busy with that uh, Rochester game getting moved back to next week. So we got West Central, two Winnemac games, Rochester uh, all next week. Yeah. So five games in a span of what six days mm-hmm. next week. Um, West Central's been getting they'll be pesky. Mm-hmm. Um, they've they've improved quite a bit uh, in recent the past couple of years. So we'll see how they do. And then yeah, they get they get Winnemac at home on Monday and travel to Winnemac on Tuesday. That, that, I mean, that's going to be a pretty big early season series in the conference. Mm-hmm. You know, I think if you're looking at North Judson and what they have coming back is kind of the favorite, you know, you definitely don't want to fall into an 0 2 hole right off the bat there. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, we, and then the Zebra is coming up on Thursday. Yeah. And then on the golf uh, course there for the boys? Well, they, they'll travel to the Cast and Invite Saturday, of course. Pond View is their home course as well. Uh, and then they travel to DeMott Christian. Uh, that, so uh, with West Central as part of a three-way match, that means Sandy Pines on Monday. So that's the potential regional course. So you definitely want, like to play there during the regular season to get accustomed to that course. And then a home match against Knox on Thursday. That is a rematch of a rainout from this past Thursday. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the track team, uh, you, you talked about uh, Pioneer was at Caston on Saturday. They'll be at Winnemac this Saturday mm-hmm. for the uh, the invite. Um, so that's, uh, they kind of started that Winnemac invite when Caston's track was, you know, kind of in disarray, mm-hmm. but they've uh, rebuilt the track, so now they have their invite and the, the Winnemac. So that's, mm-hmm. that's kind of neat. So they've yeah. put two of those together, so. You know, we talk about Jackson Baker obviously signing with with Iwu. You know, Leighton Dot, uh, obviously another very talented runner to go yeah. along with Carson Meyer on the boys' side. And you know, Violet Montgomery's going to go run at Olivet next year. So, mm-hmm. some talent there on both sides of the uh, boys and girls for Pioneer. I know Aspen Molinar, I think, was second in both of her races at the Cast and Invite. That was a pretty tough field. So we'll see how she does uh, at Winnemac. And then they travel to Rossville on Tuesday. And it'll be a three-way meet that also involves North White. Okay. All right. Any other notes there for uh, Pioneer? Steve? I think that's all I have. All right. Let's take another quick break. We'll come back, wrap it up, talk about Valley and Winnemac. Say hello to a whole new world of growing possibilities with Nutrient Ag Solutions. Let the experts at Nutrient Ag Solutions help you realize the highest crop yield with the most sustainable solutions possible. Stop by their local location just east of Fulton or call at 574-857-3555 or visit online at www.nutrientagsolutions.com to see how Nutrien can help you. Community State Bank has maintained a tradition of service since opening our doors in May of 1930. For the past 90 years, we've been dedicated to developing personal relationships in all the communities we serve. Offering both personal and business accounts, Community State Bank is your local friend and neighbor. Stop by any of our local offices to set up your accounts today, online at csbnetbank.com. Harley-Davidson of Kokomo is your destination for everything Harley. We carry a complete line of motorcycles, including the new 2024 models. We also offer a full parts department and a service department specializing in customizing, high performance, and routine maintenance. And our motor clothes department carries the latest to genuine Harley-Davidson casual and riding apparel to keep you styling no matter where the road takes you. Call us today at 765-864-9999 or visit us online at hdkokomo.com. When it comes to legal needs, you want to make sure that you have the best team in your corner. Here at Perkins & Adley LLP, we strive to provide you with the highest quality legal and professional service. Whatever your needs are, from estate planning and trust to appeals and guardianships, Perkins & Adley has the knowledge and experience to serve you now and in the future. See a full list of services online at PerkinsAdley.com. Welcome back here, talking sports with Val. We're going to wrap it up our final segment of today's show with uh, some talk about uh, Valley and Winamax. So, let's start off with uh, Tipping New Valley softball. And Valley graduated a lot of girls last year mm-hmm. from uh, last year's team. And obviously, there's uh, a lot of rebuilding that they need to do. But they have a pretty decent little pitcher coming back as a sophomore miss uh Daylin buzzard she's not doing too bad to start her sophomore year 
It, I, I, I saw her pitch two innings, the last two innings of the Triton game on, uh, was it Monday? And then I saw her pit, and then I saw she pitch, struck out 15 against Mishawaka, a 4A team the next day. Dalen's raised her game to another level. I mean, she's got that rise ball, and that, it looks like she's perfected that curveball now <laughs> since last year. And good luck trying to hit off her. I mean, she faced six batters against Triton, four strikeouts, and the two girls who put the ball in play were weak kind of comebackers to the circle that she threw them out at first. Um, yeah, and then 15 strikeouts, which I think set the school record or tied the school record mm-hmm. against Mishawaka. And they won that. They beat Triton 6-2. to two, They beat Mishawaka 3-2. to two. This is a team that's going to have to win games that way. They're not going to, they're not going to win many ten-run rule games. Um, this is a team that's going to be a, based a lot more on speed. Coach Brian Barger really emphasizes base running. Um, you know, Elise Smith scored all the way from second on an infield single uh, in that win over uh, Triton. You know, Kaylin Manns is you know hitting lead off and playing center field. You know, she's a different type of player than Corinna Styles. I mean, she's Kaylin is fast. And, um, you know, worked on her game a lot, she said, during the off season. Um, but, yeah, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, Casey Shriver is a new player who's going to be a, a key part of this team. They've got a freshman catcher in Caitlin Threlkel who's got a, you know, but, I mean, the, 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 the leaders in this team are definitely McKaylee Costello and, and Dalen Bussard. Yeah, I was just looking there at my schedule. I, I we're trying to get a few of their games over there at Valley, and we got the uh, Pioneer Panthers going to Valley on the 23rd of April. So yeah. we're going to definitely head over there and cover that one. I think there's another one a little bit later down the season that we're going to try and cover as well. So I think the I'm going to try and get that Caston game. I can't remember if it's at uh, – is that at Caston this year or is that at Valley? It's at Caston this year. Yeah, yeah. so going to try and get a couple of those softball games, those – you know, just definitely want to get them uh, on the air for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, but I, I'm very impressed with Coach Barger. You can definitely tell. You can definitely tell he's organized, and he he wants he has put a huge emphasis on base running mm-hmm. and just playing smart because it's going to have to be that way for this team. Yeah, uh, you know, Lillian Shepard is another girl who's going to get some playing time this year. So. Uh, yeah, we're going to see Anna Schock as a sophomore, who we saw a little bit last year, uh, but she's she's another girl who provides really some speed and athleticism in this lineup. She's going to be a shock to the system, I guess. Yeah, you say. yeah, yeah. Really looking forward to getting some uh, some Valley softball in the air and and seeing you know seeing Dalen pitch again. Yeah, and Michaela Co- teams would love to have a, a number two pitcher like Michaela Costello. She'd be yeah. number one for a lot of teams as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, of course, you know, like we said with everybody else, with the weather backing them up, and yeah. there's a lot of games coming up for them yeah. as well. Baseball, they're off to a two and three start. They played their first three games um, prior to spring break, and so they they had a lot, kind of a long layoff. And then they come back and they beat Triton six to five, a really nice win. Braxton Alder for their freshman with a big base hit in the bottom of the sixth inning to drive in the what turned out to be the winning run. He's just a freshman, and then. The freshman pitcher Hunter Paxton, he's going to be a, he's going to be a good one for Valley. Just a kid who you know plays travel ball for a travel team out of Plymouth, so he didn't seem out of place at all. And he strikes out the he strikes out a batter with the runner at third to end the game mm-hmm. up by one. Who? He, he, and I talked about <laughs> it was funny. I was interviewing him, and clearly he hadn't been interviewed before. And I was like, Reef was the adrenaline flowing in that seventh inning? He was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, and Paxton, he's going to play shortstop when he's not pitching. So he's going to be a big part of the team defensively, even when he's not in the, uh, on the mound. Uh, you know, Landon Durkis is a kid who's going to be a, kind of one of the senior leaders on this team. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I, I talked with Jared Littlejohn. I said, you know, this is Jared's his fifth year, his fourth season as coach. His, 2020 was supposed to be his first year. But I, I asked him, is this the youngest team you've ever coached? And he goes, yeah, but he goes, he really likes it because they're, you can tell they like the game and they're asking him questions about certain strategy. And the fact that they're asking him these questions is a sign that they're thinking kind of how they're, that they're thinking about baseball in that mm-hmm. way. So we'll see. I, you know, yeah, um, I think just one senior on the, on the team. Yeah. Sound, sounds like all the seniors are in the track. 
Uh, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of seniors on the track team. And that senior is Isaac Ramsey, who's going to play a big role on the team. He's going to be he's going to be catching when Alderfer isn't catching. But if Alderfer can hang can can play that varsity catch role, because I, I think the plan was to start Alderfer on the JV and kind of work him back, work him up to varsity. But if if he can play catcher and hold his own, then he can put Ramsey out in the outfield, and he's a really good outfielder in either center field or right field. Mm-hmm. Uh, golf team, obviously, no Greg Miller this year. So, but how are they? Basically, everybody else is back, and that includes Wes Parker and uh, uh, Love, and uh, the, it was Julian Love, and then uh, so they're going to be a pretty good team, even without Greg Miller. Uh, and they've got pretty good numbers as well. So, um, they were they were supposed to start their season with that three way match against Rochester and Culver Academy. That didn't happen. They've got the Marquette Catholic invite. That's always we always have that tournament early in April. That's coming up this Saturday, so we'll see how they do on that one. Yeah. And then we talked about that track team loaded with seniors. Loaded with seniors, but also some pretty exciting freshmen as well. So okay. uh, numbers are really good. And we've talked about, you know, on the girls' side, Chesney Miller. On the boys' side, Wade Jones. <laughs> uh, on the girls' side, Davis Smith. Uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, on the boys' side, I think, is Nate, I think Nate Parker is going to run. They're going to have some really good relays. We know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see what uh, what Wade can do. I mean, he just had a tremendous junior year on the track, and yeah, uh, he just seems like he's gotten faster. At least he did on the football field. So regional champion in the 200 meters last year. Yeah. Can't wait to see what he does this year. Yeah, yeah. Looking forward to that. So, still, have they had any meets yet? Uh, no. No. Okay. No, they. They had one that they were supposed to have one before spring break. It got rained out, and then so no, they haven't had one yet. Okay. Anything else, Valley? You want to talk? Tennis? Did we talk tennis? Yeah, we, yeah, yeah tennis. A little bit of tennis. Yeah, let's talk about tennis. Rochester. They beat Rochester four to one. Yeah. Um, Kerrigan Callahan is at one singles. Ella Sandbachen was she played doubles last year. She's moved up to two singles this year. Sarah Finney is at number three singles. I talked with Hunter Ackerman after they beat Rochester. He was really happy with how Sarah played. A newcomer uh, really showed good poise and beat uh, you know a player, an older player, and Riley Clevenger of Rochester. Uh, the one doubles team struggled a little bit against Rochester, uh, but that two doubles team with um, Hallstrom and Holder, Carly Hallstrom and Sienna Holder, that was a really nice win for them. So this is a Valley program. Hunter Ackerman has done a really great job. Of course, his wife Emily helps coaching, uh, helps coach with him, and then he helps her out at the Grace College women's team. So they get, um, yeah, this team's got a really good work ethic. I, you know, they, again, they were the, that Rochester match was their first match after spring break, so they had You could, he, he kind of anticipated them being rusty. Uh, this is a team that's going to evolve as the year progresses. They were supposed to play Triton on Wednesday, that got rained out. They were supposed to play Knox on Thursday, that got rained out. Hmm. So. Still only a one match under their belt, so it's yeah. a lot of reason for optimism. The only problem is they're in, in the same section with Warsaw. Yeah. All right, let's talk a little Winnemac here. We've already kind of talked uh, a, a little Winnemac, obviously, yeah. with the softball team playing uh, against Rochester earlier this week. Um, you know, big news, obviously, for the softball team is obviously the new uh, field, and they're yeah. going to do a dedication doubleheader. And uh, right. uh, kind of a welcome back ceremony for alumni tomorrow for that. Right. The doubleheader against Northfield starts at 10 a.m., but get there early. Get there around 9.30 or 9.40 because they're going to have these ceremonies. Are gonna be, there's a bench dedicated to former coach Ron Nyes, who passed away uh, within the last year. Uh, he was he was Jennifer Belcher's predecessor as coach. Mm-hmm. And he, she was an assistant under him Yeah. Uh, once upon a time. So. Is that the only two coaches they've had, probably? In the last 25 years, I think. Yeah, how long have they had softball there? That's a good question. It's possible. Yeah. yeah it's possible yeah. they've only had those two ever. Yeah. So, yeah, um, the de- the dedication of the field is going to be really nice. Yeah. Um, I, I Just really exciting to, to get that, you know, back at the high school. Yeah. So they, they can all kind of, you know, the, the atmosphere is just really neat. We've talked about that before with, you know, the baseball, the softball, the track. You know everything being there together. Yeah. Now we saw them face a really good pitcher and Bria Rensberger of Rochester the other day. 
Rensberger had 12 strikeouts in that game. Um, you know, we'll see how they get better. You know, I, I, I talked with, you know, Coach uh, with Belcher, Coach Belcher after the game, and I think she talked about this is going to be something where it'll take it might, it might take some time, but um, that, that at least that's the impression that I got from her. Obviously, Corinne Combs is just a junior, but she's really one of the veterans on this team at catcher and one of the sluggers on this team. I'm not sure they're going to have quite the power some of the, that some previous Winnipeg teams have had. I think they got pretty good speed when you talk about um, not only Maggie Smith but Decker um, and Walters and those players. So I think this is. A, I'll, I'll be curious to see how they they do. Uh, I, I know talking with Jim Coleman, he has a lot of respect for Coach Belcher and how how she coaches her team and how they're, how they're good every year and how they don't beat themselves. Mm-hmm. So um, we talked a little bit about the baseball team. Um, Tough loss to Carroll on Monday. Lost ten to three in their opener. Uh, we will see how they do um, this weekend. Um, yeah, uh, it's a team that uh, you know they've got they've got quite a bit of experience, and obviously they've got an experienced coach and Coach Hendricks. Um, again, Maddox Businski is going to play some college baseball at Manchester University, so you think he's going to be one of the kind of one of the veteran leaders on this team. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how they do. Uh, John Malco is another senior who's played a lot of baseball. Will Malco is a sophomore. is a really talented athlete. So, yeah, we'll see how they do. And then uh, we talked about the track team is going to be hosting their invite coming up tomorrow. So, obviously, uh, they've, got really good, they've got really good numbers. And we talked about during cross-country season how they were young. Their boys' cross-country team was really young, but coming on, and so I think they're going to be pretty solid in the distance events, and you know their girls are going to be solid in the distance mm-hmm. events. And then they've got Maggie Smith and Bianca Huiza running the sprints. So uh, Winamax always had it; they've always had a really good tradition and track, and that should be no different this year. Yeah. All right, I think we about wrapped it up. Anything else you can think of? You want to? I'm tapped out. You're tapped out. All right, so. A little bit of a shorter show today, obviously. <laughs> that Adria the... Gloss plays baseball still just <laughs> – I've got to see this. Yeah. <laughs> hopefully we get a chance to get some games in. Uh, hopefully the weather will straighten up. Looking forward to seeing the uh, Rochester Zebras hopefully later today at home against the Culver Academy Eagles. Uh, this is going to be Rochester's seventh game and Culver's third. Yeah. You know, so that's just kind of where we're at with uh, spring sports sometimes. So – they're uh, they're just kind of getting started, but they are coming in two and zero. So, and beautiful weather Monday and Tuesday is supposed to be in the seventies. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, that'd be really nice. So, well, we're gonna wrap it up here for today. We'll be back next week talking. <laughs>